I recently started playing Hades again, and I thought, why is this game so good? What makes it much better than most of the other games I've played since its release? With the announcement of Hades 2 at the Game Awards, I thought, you know what? Time to revisit Hades. Time to fall back in one of the best roguelikes ever made and see what made it so great. First, I forgot how slowly the game introduces you to new mechanics. Hades is probably one of the best games for the new player experience. At first, you have one weapon and three different attacks, all fairly simple. You can try that on a dummy named Skelly, who is a fully fleshed out character, and this is something that Supergiant Games will do a lot in this game, fleshing out characters that might not need to just because it gives a bit more to the story. Other games might have just put a dummy there and moved on, but not Hades. The devs also made it very clear that you're going to die, and they made a conscious effort to normalize death. In fact, even when you succeed in a run, you still end up dying. But dying in Hades is almost rewarding. It allows you to return to the quote-unquote hub, and usually it unlocks new dialogues of different characters, allowing you to understand the story more. This means that the feeling of failure when you die is almost instantaneously replaced by a feeling of progression through the storyline. New abilities in the mirror are unlocked through different resources you've collected during your previous escape attempts, thus always making you feel like you're making progress. Because of this, every time I died, I found myself looking forward to the new dialogues that I would have, and this allowed me to play for more than 100 hours and not get tired of the game. The plot is also not revealed immediately. We first believe that we want to escape the underworld to join our extended family up on Olympus, but it turns out that we want to escape to find our mother, Persephone, who left the realm when she thought that her son Zagreus had died at birth. It turns out you were revived somehow, but only after Persephone left. This constitutes the main plot of the game, with almost every side character having a type of side quest or story attached to them that you will be able to discover after getting closer to them by giving them bottles of nectar that you can find in your runs. These side stories are short but interesting and often give some explanation as to why a character acts a certain way. One story that jumped out at me as one of the more interesting ones was Orpheus's. He does not want to sing since he lost his muse Eurydice, which he tried to save from the underworld while still alive, thus incurring Hades' wrath. Throughout Orpheus's side story, you will be able to reunite him with Eurydice and complete his arc, as well as Eurydice's arc, but this takes time and a lot of dialogue which is all voice acted. Every single character is voice acted entirely in Hades. You can tell the team put time into the voice acting and making sure it sounds good, considering the sheer amount of dialogue lines that were written for each character. I admire that they put the effort to voice act everything. The developers probably realized that in a quick paced action game like Hades, people would most likely not want to bother with reading, so the voice acting serves a massive purpose and is not only there to bring life to these characters, but it is also there to make sure that the players also follow the story along and do not just gloss over everything. Some people will still do that, but by voice acting every dialogue, the devs made sure to get the attention of as many players as possible regarding the story. The game also has a very good amount of enemy variation. Every level of the underworld has a different feel and different types of enemies, keeping the runs interesting all the way through. I already talked about how Hades does a really good job of keeping things simple at the beginning for the new player experience. Still, something that Hades does well is that the devs know exactly when to implement new mechanics and how to implement them so that the players do not feel overwhelmed with a hundred new things they have to assimilate. On top of its masterful implementation of new gameplay elements, Hades does a really good job in giving players something that they can work towards if they want to. This is something that a lot of games tend to do to try and bring up the game's runtime. Still, Hades is extremely honest about these elements. For example, if you as a player want to keep playing for thousands of hours, you can give resources to a shade in Hades' chamber which will give you a new title or rank. But the game is very clear and honest about the fact that this is something you can do if you want something to work towards, but it actually does not give you anything apart from a cosmetic health bar and a title in the game. This is something that I admire about Hades. It gives players different ways to engage with the game and different things that the player can work towards, but it never forces the player to do so or makes the player feel like they were missing out if they don't engage with that little piece of content. And to me, this shows that Supergiant games respect their players. They are very honest and never try to shove a content feature in your face somewhat backhandedly. Too many games nowadays feel like they don't respect their players and just kind of ignore how the player is going to feel about something. 
When the game told me about the title slash rank up feature and was honest about the fact that it would not bring me anything, I was like, oh, that's cool. At least if I want to keep playing, I can still have something to work towards, even if I finish the game. It didn't feel like a mystery that would drag the game on and on. It was just a cool feature for players that wanted to keep playing. Now, it's not to say that Hades is a perfect game. One of the criticisms that I have is that after unlocking the Pact of Punishment, which is a way to make the runs harder in a myriad of different ways, you will be incentivized to go up slowly in difficulty, since this will allow you to get rewards easily. Basically, how the game works is that for every heat level, which we can translate to a difficulty level, you will be able to unlock new resources only the first time you escape with that heat level. The problem arises after you unlock this functionality. Since you will gradually rise up in heat levels, the game feels surprisingly easy for a while until you reach a high enough heat level where it feels like there is a challenge again. For example, I went on a 12 run win streak after unlocking the Pact of Punishment. This problem is easily remedied as nothing states that the player is not allowed to have a higher heat level than they need, but it does feel inefficient to do so. This is only a small criticism, but it underlines the fact that Hades is not a perfect game. It does have flaws, granted not many, but this is what makes this game so interesting in how it manages to be so much better than the rest despite a few flaws here and there. Is Hades a masterpiece? I want to say, maybe. In the eyes of a lot of people, it is. It would not be wrong to call it such. But I think that Hades just represents what games should strive to be. A game that respects the players and understands that players need to feel invested in a game. They understood that the gameplay does not need to be hyper convoluted with a bunch of systems right off the bat just so the players feel that there's a lot to the game. Instead, it refrains from introducing the harder to understand gameplay elements to let the player have time to learn the basics of the game and still feel like they are progressing. Too many games nowadays seem worried that players are going to turn off the game and never come back within the first hour, so they shove every single piece of content down the player's throat to try and wow them and make them feel like they will miss out if they don't come back. It feels like the dev team of Hades knew exactly what their game was and didn't try to make it something it was not. That is one of the main strengths of this game, and it feels sad to say that one of the strengths of a game is knowing what it is and not straying too far from that. To me, it shows how I feel about a lot of the games that I've played lately. And you guys can leave your opinions in the comment section and tell me if you think I'm completely wrong about this. But Hades is a rare game that does not try to take on too much. Hades is probably as close to perfect as a game developer can get. Everything is done in a way that is respectful of their players. And it has a simple beauty to it that is hard to describe. I haven't even talked about the amazing music and songs written for this game. Good Riddance and End of Blood are two incredible songs that are not overutilized, and the boss fights music are there to elevate the fight and not take it over. I think that Supergiant Games' philosophy with Hades was whatever is simple and makes the experience of the player better should be in the game. Things such as the heads up display going away when you stay still for a short moment to let you appreciate the beauty of the game, or putting a little message under the heat gauge just for the fun of it or cutting the end of runs after the main story so that you don't have to run through empty grease over and over again, are a testament to that. If it creates a better experience for the player, let's implement it. If it does not, let's cut it. Another one of these features that I forgot is being able to listen to any song in the House of Hades. It does not bring anything gameplay-wise, but it's nice to have and my game experience is better for it. This to me is why Hades is the best game I have played in the past three years. It set a new standard as to what I expect a solo game to be. It was captivating, it didn't make me feel like I needed to finish it, but instead, it made me want to finish it. Hades made me want to know more about its characters and the stories that they have. I hope that more games in the future take a similar approach when it comes to building a new game. Anyways, this is why I think Hades is as good as it is. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure some of you agree or disagree with me on some points and I'd like to know your views and start a conversation. If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe, it helps out the channel a lot. You can also check out my Twitch channel in the description if you want to join me live. On this note, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.